clothing now for the English climate and a preview of next year's men's hats, which, as you'll have gathered, are going to be a little brighter. First, meet artist Harry Lamplow, who's been designing hats for 25 years, although, quite frankly, you'll never see his name among the more elegant hatters of the fashion world. Now let's introduce the man who dictates what the well-dressed man will wear, Mr. Alan Bangham. This, by the way, is one place where you can do that to the boss and get away with it. For at this factory in Walthamstow, London, the hats they make are party hats. This is the first stage in making the papier-mâché sort. The basis is wood pulp beaten into a fine mixture to which various stiffening materials and dyes are added. A more unappetizing recipe it's difficult to imagine. But then, quite simply, in one process, the molding machine, it's transformed into an attractive hat. Cowboy style for extroverts and something a little quieter for the rest of us. This must be the only Ascot topper in the world for one and sixpence. Wonder how far you'd get with it in the members' enclosure. Next stage is the drying ovens through which the hats pass for about 40 minutes. Then they are unloaded and have the final trimmings added. The other side of the industry is the manufacture of paper novelties like this dragoon hat made by Mrs. Flory Perrin, who's been doing this kind of work for 30 years. In fact, it's largely due to the skill and efficiency of workers like her that the industry has beaten off the challenge of Germany and Japan. Today, 40% of production is for export. There's nothing new about false noses, but they're still as popular as ever, and they're made here by the thousands. Similarly, blowouts are always in demand, and this is testing by automation. Toy trumpets come off this machine at the rate of 3,600 an hour, an illustration of the tremendous demand there still is for the simple things that never fail to make us laugh.